Hey everyone, the infamous Joe G here, and today I wanna to show you really quickly a new feature that was introduced to the user interface for CyberArk's Conjure Cloud in the Identity Security Platform. So for me to be able to show you this, let me first log in by scanning this QR code. There we go, that should get me in. And I'm gonna maneuver my way from Privilege Cloud, which is the last service that I happened to be on before I had logged off. We're gonna maneuver from Privilege Cloud over to Conjure Cloud. And when we make it over to Conjure Cloud, here we're uh, met with this introduction page that will kind of help us walk through how to get set up in Conjure Cloud. Uh, we've already done a lot of this, so we're going to move immediately over to the resources page. On the resources page of the user interface, this is where you can check out all of the different resources secrets, workloads, users, groups, and layers. Uh, you can filter them out, you can search through them and get all the info from all the resources here. Uh, but you'll notice in the upper right-hand corner, there's this new button now called Create Workload. In Conjure Cloud, we call host identities workload identities now. We're, we're changing the name to become workload. So anytime, you see workload, if you're coming from a self-hosted Conjure Enterprise solution, just know in your mind, workload equals host, all right? And we're gonna create one of those. So we'll click the button and we're immediately presented with a, a myriad of options here uh, that we can choose. Uh, if, if one of these options doesn't appear here, you can always choose other. Uh, today, I think that I'm feeling a little AWS-y, so we're gonna choose AWS click next, and then we're going to give our workload ID a name. This is, you know, the name that you would typically give it. Uh, I think in this case, I'm going to give it the name of one of my roles, which is Conjure AWS role for EC2. And then I have already defined a location here that is, uh, ends in my account number. So if we were going to be creating this workload identity to utilize the IAM authenticator that allows us to uh, use IAM role authentication to authenticate with Conjure and retrieve secrets. If I put it in this location, it would match the criteria that we need for that authenticator to work, where it's AWS account ID forward slash the name of the IAM role. So we'll go ahead and select this location and click next. Looks like I've already created one for this, so I'll go ahead and change this to ECS. I have one for ECS as well. Uh, so you can see we're not going to be able to make duplicates here. Uh, they definitely have to be unique. I'll choose my AWS IAM authenticator that I previously created. Uh, if there is not an authenticator I wanted to use with this and I just wanted to generate an API key, I can switch over to here and at the end in the summary, I will be allowed to one time only copy that API key to my clipboard so that I can securely store it in my vault, right? My, my privilege cloud vault, I'd switch over there and immediately onboard it uh, so that I could start to rotate that API key and not walk away with one on my clipboard that actually is still active. Uh, but we're going to choose Authenticator, AWS IAM, click Next. Uh, here is where we would define the annotations, right, in policy when we're creating some authenticators, JSON Web Token Authenticator, for example. We need to uh, further enforce the workload identities authorizations by way of utilizing annotations. And those annotations would take the form of the authenticator, the authenticator's service ID, and then forward slash, uh, whatever the property is that's going to be uh, uh, utilized from like a JSON web token or whatever. Now, AWS's IAM authenticator doesn't have anything, but just to show you an example, if I wanted to add the AWS account ID, then I could do that there. And that would be the number that I'm, I'm already using in the in the grand scheme of things. But just to show you how you can go ahead and start to, to, to deal with these, uh, we're not gonna actually be using it, but that's okay. Uh, and then finally, the last step before we get to the summary and get to actually set our changes here with this workload is access to safes. So uh, all of these safes are present in Privilege Cloud. Uh, they each have a safe member 
named Conjure Sync applied to them, and that's why they're appearing here. So those safes have been tagged by a Conjure Sync safe member to be allowed to show here so that they can be uh, accessed by Conjure Cloud workload identities. And so I can choose, you know, my app team safe. Maybe, uh, you know, I need to deal with this app safe up here as well. I can choose multiples. Click next, get to the summary, go ahead and click done. And then I can move on with utilizing this account now. I'm not actually going to set it, but I just wanted to present to you guys how easy it is now to create a workload without needing to do it through policy as code. If you're just going to be creating a workload for a single test, uh, no automation needed, this is really the easiest way for a human user to be able to do that today. Uh, I look forward to showing you more awesome things as they're introduced to Conjure Cloud in the future. Until then, stay secure.